air masses are huge areas of air that have basically the same conditions, the same temperature, the same humidity, etc. They are considered either to be a cold air mass or a warm air mass. We don't have medium warm air masses. We don't have hot air masses. We just call them cold or warm. Warm air masses are less dense. In other words, they weigh less. Density is how compact things are. Weight is how much gravity pulls down. So if you have less dense air, each gallon is going to weigh less than um, the other kind. Okay, if it has less density, it weighs less, it's going to have less pressure on the ground, less weight pushing down. They are labeled as, uh, I don't know why I have the word and, on a weather map, let's see here. Um, let's see here, warm air. Oh, with, as an L. Ah, that's it, L. L for low pressure. Cold air masses. They are more dense because as they get colder, they contract less space between the molecules. So every gallon weighs more. Since it weighs more, it exerts more pressure on the ground. So it's more pressure or high pressure, and those are labeled as an H for high pressure. Now you're always going to have a boundary between a warm air mass and a cold air mass, and these boundaries are called fronts. So you've heard of a cold front coming through or a warm front going to be approaching. That's how the new air is going to feel. When a cold air front comes, that means that we're going to, we're currently in a warmer one and we're going to get hit by a cold one later on. Cold air front is when cold air moves in to replace warm air. The symbol is a blue line with, with triangles pointed in the direction of motion. So if I had a, a front here where this cold is up there and warm air is here and the cold air is moving in this direction, I would have triangles like this. The triangles are pointing in the direction of movement. And um, I think of those triangles as like icicles on a, uh, a house roof line. To remind me that triangles are cold, icicles are cold. Okay, this reminds you of icicles. Ice, ice. Oh, my word, how do I spell icicles? Oh, that's not the right way of spelling icicles, I don't think. Remove the E. There we go. A warm front is when warm air moves to replace cold air. The symbol is a red line with half circles. Or semicircles pointed in the direction of motion. So if here's the boundary between we have warm air here and cold air here and the warm air is moving in, we'd have semicircles on this side. They might remind you of a sunrise. Nice warm sun on a warm summer day. So in this case, okay, that doesn't remind me of a sunrise. But if I had the warm down here moving in this direction, and then I'd have the, the half circles, the semicircles on that side, okay, now it looks like a sun rising up. So looking at the picture down here, we have the cold air moving, and there we have the triangles. Here we have the warm air moving up, and we have the semicircles, half circles. Next page. As the cold air mass moves and gets pushed around, their boundaries are much like the slime. Remember from the slime demonstration, the tail end is gradual and the front end is steep. So let's draw a cold front. This is where cold air moves in, pushing the warm air off the page. So here's the ground. And let's see here, cold front. So we have... Um, cold air 
going this way. And warm air going that way. Um, warm air is just sitting there. So when the cold air moves like that, it's going to get um, shaped in that regards like this. There's going to be a relatively steep boundary. And here's a person. The warm air is going to get pushed up rather quickly. And so we get lots of clouds forming right there. Oh, rats, I think I might have drawn that wrong. Let me think about this for a second. <coughs> nope, that's right. Okay, now, a warm front. So that's when we have cold air, and we have warm air here. And it's going to be get... Let's see, the cold air is still shaped in the same way as our slime. So as the warm air moves to the right, it has a more gradual lifting of the air. And so you have the clouds being formed over a longer period of time. So here we have um, the person in front of the front. Here's the boundary between the warm and cold and they have clouds forming over a long period of time, whereas with the cold front, the clouds are just right above them. Notice in both cases, the result is warm air rises. When warm air rises, it cools. If it cools to the dew point, then the air can't hold all the water vapor, so it condenses out and forms clouds. The more humid the air is, the easier it is for clouds to form. At the cold front, warm air rises rather quickly. We have this steep boundary here. Relatively narrow band of puffy clouds form, cumulus clouds. And since they rise quickly, there's quick condensation, so we have quick showers, quick rain, quick precipitation. Precipitation. In line eight, draw several clouds above each other at the front. Draw lots of rain in a small area under them. Let me pause there. Everybody up to speed? Number 17, at the warm front, warm air rises more gradually. Remember, the slime was a model of cold air masses. They smear out in the back and they pile up in the front like a cold air mass. And so here we're looking at the tail end where it's smeared out and the warm air gradually goes up and over it. Okay, so at first, way up here, we have high cirrus clouds that form first. They might be hundreds of miles in front of the front, in ahead of the front. And then we have puppy, pu <laughs> puffy cumulus clouds. And then at the tail end, we have stratus clouds. Now, that's not at every single one, but that's uh, the general pattern at warm fronts. You can look up Word Weather Word of the Week on YouTube for stationary and occluded fronts to see videos there. Okay.